Greetings everyone, this is Tokraft. As I reviewed the new Swedish tank destroyers last week, I thought it would be quite fitting to make a preview video on the other new Swedish tech tree. So here it is. The new Swedish light, medium and heavy tanks. In this video you're going to see some mediocre tanks and some very competitive ones. And on the top of the tree, there will be new auto-loading heavy tanks. So guys, just as last week, let's get right into this. Before we really get into the video on the new Swedish tanks, I'd like to thank you guys so much for all the support and the love on my last preview video. I'm really happy with how the video got received by you guys. So again, thank you guys so much. Let's hope that I can make this preview video just as enjoyable as my last one. If you haven't seen that video for whatever reason, you can find the video up in the cards menu. Also in this video, I'm not going to review the tier 1 tank anymore, as I showed the tier 1 in my last preview video as well. So if you haven't seen the tier 1 new Swedish light tank, then check out my other preview video as well. Let's get on with the new Swedish light tanks. So everyone, in this video we are starting off with the new tier 2 Swedish light tank, the Stridswagen M38. And as we can see, yeah, it's a pretty, yeah. <laughs> I can't really um, give much commentary on the looks here, but let's take a look first as we can see. The armor, not very much at all. You will not be able to bounce anything. 50 millimeters at most. So we don't really need to go in too much detail on that. The mobility, 45 uh, km per hour top speed limit forwards. Uh, which is pretty decent. This thing is pretty mobile as you can see in the gameplay as well. This thing uh, got around on the battlefield pretty quickly. Also 18 km per hour uh, top speed backwards. Which is also pretty alright. It's not the worst, it's not the best. Uh, it's pretty decent, as I said. This thing is pretty mobile. Then we get on to the gun of this new tier 2 tank. As we can see, an amazing rate of fire. Almost 26 rounds a minute. Just amazing stuff there. 55mm of penetration, which is pretty decent for a tier 2 tank. Uh, as most of the tier 2 tanks don't have any armor whatsoever. Um, this is a pretty alright and average uh, penetration. Then we get on to the alpha damage, the average alpha damage, which is only 40. Yeah, well, it's not a very big alpha damage. But as you shoot a lot of rounds per minute, uh, you'll be able to significantly be able to damage your opponents. And as we can also see, we get 0.42 accuracy, yeah, which is pretty bad. But pretty much every tier 2 tank uh, has this bad of a penetration. There's pretty much no tier 2 tank in the game, I think, that has uh, better than 0.34 Accuracy at least in my knowledge Then as we can see we do get a very good aim time of 1.8 seconds, which is just very good Nothing really special of uh, nothing special nothing really bad to say about the aim time That's what I meant to say So a thing that I do need to highlight is that you get 15 degrees of gun depression. Just look at that man 15 degrees of gun depression. That is just ridiculous everyone 15 degrees 10 even 10 degrees is already amazing but 15, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even tell you how amazing 15 degrees of gun depression is. You will also see that in the gameplay, as I'm standing on the ridge on Overlord, and I'll be able to snipe at the AMX CDC, I think it is, really effectively. I can point my gun down so far, it is just ridiculous. Well, then you get enough XP to unlock the tier 3. And you go up towards the tier 3 that you get towards the Stritzwagen M40L. So, let's take a look. As we can see, this tank actually gets a bit of armor for its tier. As we can see, 45mm on the hull, 13 on the sides and rear. Yeah, well, 13 is, not, is pretty much not going to bounce you anything. 48 might, because as we can see, the frontal armor of this tank is also a little bit angled. Also, as we can see, the turret, 15mm of armor. Yeah. Pretty alright. It might bounce you something because this turret looks quite trollish. I'm not sure if this piece here is a gum endlet. It's probably not. But it might bounce you a shot. But the sides and rear of the turret uh, will almost certainly not bounce a shot for you. 20 millimeters on the sides and 35 on the rear of the turret. Nothing special there. Then the mobility. 
45 km per hour top speed forwards and 18 backwards the same as on the tier 2 so nothing special here then we take a look at the gun okay 30 uh, rounds a minute rate of fire which is amazing 30 yeah nothing bad to say about that you will pretty much reload in two seconds in this tank it is just amazing 30 rounds a minute so we can see 78 millimeters of penetration which is pretty good for a tier 3 tank. It's pretty alright. 78. Then we get towards the alpha damage. Yeah, 40 again. Hmm. It was already not that good in tier 2. But in tier 3, yeah. It is certainly not going to be the best. But well, you can't have it all, can you? You do have a really good rate of fire to compensate for the low alpha damage. Of course. Then we get to the accuracies we can see. 0.38, which is pretty bad as well. At least it is better than the tier 4 of the tier 4 to tier 2. But still, it is nothing very special. Then we get towards the aim time. An amazing aim time. Just an amazing aim time of 1.6 seconds. Nothing to add. Really, 1.6 is just amazing. Also, thing that is amazing is that you maintain the minus 15 degrees of gun depression. Again, 15 degrees. It is just... It is heaven. For, uh, yeah, concerning the tanks. It is just amazing. 15 degrees of gun depression. Well then, hopefully you've bounced a few shots. You've used your gun depression. And then you get towards the tier 4. The Lago. The Lego. However you would like to pronounce it. Well, as we can see, this thing actually gets an armor downgrade. Compared to the tier 3, as we can see. 34 millimeters at most on the whole of the tank. So, well, you're not going to bounce anything pretty much at tier 4. There's only one thing that, as we can see, might bounce you a shot. And that is this upper plate, as we can see. It is pretty extremely angled, as we can see. So, this might bounce you a shot. Uh, of course, this is no guarantee. Um, this will not guarantee you bouncing shots. But it might. As we can see, the rest of the, ta rest of the tank is pretty boxy and pretty flat armored. So, this will... Not bounce you any shots. Yeah, perhaps these side plates here on the turret might bounce you a shot. But yeah, well, nothing really special about those. Then we get towards the mobility. It's it's the same. 45 forwards, 18 backwards. Nothing special. Nothing really good here. As we can see, 10 degrees of gun depression, which is still very, very good. It's not as good as 15 degrees, of course. But 10 degrees is still very nice. I did find it a little bit annoying going from the tier 3 up to the tier 4 because, yeah, well, you do lose 5 degrees of gun depression, which is a pretty significant amount. Uh, even if you still uh, have 10 degrees of gun depression left on the tier 4, uh, it's a pretty significant difference, 5 degrees of gun depression. But, oh well, let's take a look at the gun of this tank. We get... Yeah, the rate of fire goes down pretty significantly. But still, 21 rounds a minute is still very alright. A penetration of 91, which is pretty alright. It's pretty decent for a tier 4 tank. There are tanks that have a lot more penetration, like the Matilda. 120 uh, millimeters of penetration. And there are tanks that have a lot less. But I think that 91 millimeters of penetration is very workable for a tier 4 tank. Then we can see the average damage of this tank. Which is 75. Meh. It's a pretty meh alpha damage as well. It's nothing special. It's nothing really bad either. Then again. Accuracy of 0.38. Pretty bad. But not as bad as 0.42. But still it could be a lot better. And then a pretty mediocre aim time. Of 2.6 seconds. Again nothing special here. I think um, this tier 4 tank is a little bit less competitive than the tier 3. But oh well, you can't have it all. Then after the Lago, the Lego, however you would like to pronounce it. You go up to the tier 5 and you get the Stratzwagen M42. And as we can see, this is a pretty ugly tank. It is very ugly indeed. But oh well, you go up by armor again a little bit. You get the same amount of armor as the tier 3. Still... 50 millimeters at most is not going to bounce you anything at tier 5. Again, we can see a very well angled upper plate here. This again might bounce you a shot. It might not. You'll see. But the, the thing that I'd like to point out. Don't 
trust your armor fully it will just not work out for you as we can see the rest of the tank is really boxy again and it uh, just might bounce a shot for you this upper plate or it might not uh, I can't uh, convince you if I can't convince you then yeah well you have to play this tank for yourself then as we can see the mobility 45 km per hour top speed forwards which is again pretty all right for a tier 5 medium tank it's not the best it's not the worst it's pretty meh then the backwards top speed which goes up from 18 to 20 so you do get a little bit uh, faster backwards not that you need that that often but still it is nice to have of course and then as we can see the gun depression goes back down to minus 15 hallelujah minus 15 degrees of gun depression which is just amazing so you can see this tank also looks like it it can handle the 15 degrees just look at the amount of uh, this tank that at least it can depress its gun uh, we can see that this tank has a lot of potential to point its gun down so then the gun of this tank 9.5 rounds a minute which is pretty yeah it is very bad to be honest 15 of uh, 15 9.5 rounds a minute is very very bad especially for a gun that only has 115 uh, average penetration and 150 alpha damage well this gun in my opinion is just not very competitive whatsoever this rate of fire is just too bad for the statistics you get with it 115 is not that bad it's pretty average as well. It's very workable in tier 5. But still, it is nothing special. Also, the 150 alpha damage. Nothing special there as well. So, yeah. Mm, it will just not... Uh, it just doesn't fit well with this rate of fire. Even the accuracy is still pretty bad. 0.38. Nothing special there. And a pretty mediocre aim time again of 2.5 seconds. Well, this tank is pretty mediocre. It is... Uh, pretty bad compared to the other tanks in this line previous to this also in the test server it looked like my shells uh, when i was playing it of course it looked like my shells came from a different uh, direction out of the screen which is very very annoying at first uh, i thought that the gun was not mounted at the center of the tank but now if i as i look at it it looks like it is it is just this tank yeah this turret that just has a big bump for the machine gun ports here then it just makes it look like this gun is not aiming. If yeah, this gun isn't located in the middle of the turret here. But it might as well be. So then we get on towards tier 6. The Stritzwagen 74. And I actually recognize this vehicle. Because two years ago when I went towards the uh, tank museum in Danville, Virginia. In the United States of America. I actually got to see this tank in real life. Um, it was a few seconds that I showed um, the tank because I also made a video about the tanks that I had seen in the museum. And this tank was also there. Uh, not me knowing of course that this tank two years later would be introduced in World of Tanks. Which is just amazing. First, let's continue with the armor of this tank. Again 55mm at most. And that's on the front of the hull. And this 50 millimeters, yeah, actually comes from the tier 5. Because as we can see, the hulls are pretty much identical. Pretty much. As we can see, there's not a lot of difference. The hull in tier 6 is a little bit bigger. But uh, the armor is very, very comparable. And then we get the turret, as we can see. It is, yeah, it, it looks a bit like a T-37 turret. But it also doesn't. It's, it's a very, yeah, how is it called? Um, it's a very thin and long turret, which looks awesome in my opinion. Again, this tank doesn't really have the armor as its speciality, but this tank is really good for its tier, and we'll come to that. First of all, the mobility, as we can see, is still pretty average stuff. 45 forwards, 18 backwards, pretty much the standard mobility in this line. And then we get, again, towards an amazing feature of this tank. 15 degrees of gun depression, again, hallelujah, 15 degrees... Hooray, hooray. Then we get on towards the speciality of this tier 6 medium tank. Uh, and that is the gun. Just like on the tier 6 in the Swedish tank destroyer line. The tier 6 also had the gun as its speciality. As we can see, not the best rate of fire you could ever get. But you get a very com competitive penetration of 148. It's not the best penetration, of course. Also, you get uh, a pretty average uh, average 
damage is what I meant to say. But you get an amazing accuracy of 0.33, which is really good. And an amazing aim time of 1.8 seconds. The gun of this tank is just really nice to work with. I really like to play this tank on the test server as well. And the fact that I've seen this tank in real life just makes me want to get this thing even more. I think I will really like this vehicle when it comes out on the live server. So this is a really um, yeah, competitive tier 6 tank in my opinion. So then you get out towards the tier 7 tank. And this thing is really something special. But it's... Because as we can see, this thing doesn't really look like anything or any tank that was previous to this in this tech tree. As we can see, it is a uh, lower profile, a lot lower profile than the tier 6. As you actually get more armor than the tier 6, you get 70 millimeters of armor. Yeah, well, it still isn't enough to bounce anything at tier 7. But at least frontally, it enables you to not be penetrated by HE rounds. Uh, by enemy uh, tanks, of course, because the previous tanks pretty much all could be penetrated by he rounds by higher tier tanks or by equal tier tanks the armor is not the speciality of this tank the mobility is it is 60 kilometers power forwards and 20 backwards just an amazing feature of this tank this thing gets 10 degrees of gun depression still very good of course nothing compared to the 15 degrees but 10 is still very competitive then we go on towards the gun and that is also the thing that is really special about this tier 7 Leo. As we can see pretty bad, yeah really bad rate of fire <laughs> to be honest. Pretty bad accuracy as well, it's not, no, it's not that bad because yeah well there are other tier 7 um, medium tanks like the Comet that get 145mm of penetration. It's not the worst penetration, it's not the best for a tier 7 medium tank, it's pretty meh. But as we can see, the speciality of this tank is the 300 alpha damage that this gun gets, as we can see. It is just uh, very, yeah, something very different compared to the other tanks in this tech tree. And that is what I really like. Again, the variety of the tanks. Very, very mediocre and bad <laughs> accuracy of 0.42 and a very bad aim time of 3 seconds. And that's the thing that really... Uh, uh, stood out from the rest of the st statistics of this tank. When I played this tank on the test server, I really uh, didn't like the gun handling. But uh, you do have to let this gun aim fully to enable yourself to get the highest chance of uh, your shot going where you want to. But still, I think this is a really cool, cool tank for the variety in World of Tanks. And then we get towards the top tier tanks in this tech tree. The first heavy tank in this tech tree the Emil 1. And as we can see, this tank is very, very small, to be honest. And it is the first heavy tank of this new uh, yeah, Swedish tank branch, as we can see here. And guys, I can tell you, this is an auto-loading tank. So let's quickly get into the statistics of this tank. As we can see, this tank actually gets armor, guys, believe it or not. Yes, it's a heavy tank with armor. It's a... Uh, it's pretty much what the French tanks wanted to be, right? This thing, yeah, well, the whole armor isn't that special. 100 millimeters on the front. So we can see we do get some nice angling here. But still, I don't think that the armor will bounce that much. Uh, very bad rear and side armor of 20 millimeters and 30 millimeters. We do get a very good turret armor of 180 millimeters. And very bad 35 to 20 millimeters of armor on the rear and sides so you're really going to have it uh, from the frontal armor of this tank still mobility is very very good for a heavy tank 50 km per hour top speed forwards and 60 backward backwards just amazing for a heavy tank and we get 12 degrees of gun depression guys oh my god uh, of course it's not as good as good as 15 in one of the first uh, in one of yeah in the lower tier tanks of this branch 12 degrees is still uh, much better than 10. So 12 degrees is very, very well workable. It is just a very nice gun depression. As we can see, the gun just moves between these two armor plates on the turret. And it will be, yeah, enable itself to depress the gun down to up to 12 degrees. So then we get towards the one of the other specialities of this tank. And that's pretty much the main speciality. And that is the gun. Because this tank gets an auto loader. As we can see, a 105mm autoloader with 4 shells in the magazine. 
The time of loading between shells is 3.5 seconds, which is pretty bad. But yeah, well, it's very comparable to the French auto-loading tanks. Still, uh, this thing gets an auto-loader, which is, which is absolutely ridiculous and awesome, of course. This clip reloads in 37 seconds, as we can see. It's not the best, it's not the worst. It's a lot better than the 5100. But of course, the 5100 uh, at the rate as well gets 6 shells in the magazine. Which reloads uh, for 50 seconds. Which is very, very long indeed. But still, 37 is... Yeah, hmm, it's not the best. It's not the worst. This thing doesn't get the best DPM of all time. But really, the autoloader is the, is the advantage and the strength of this tank. So, then we get towards the penetration. 217. It's not the best for a tier 8 tank. But still, it is very well workable. Uh, a lot of tier 8 heavy tanks have around the 220 millimeters of penetration mark. The premium rounds, as we can see, not the best ever. 234 for uh, 34, 232 for a tier 8 tank is not the best either. So uh, the premium rounds on this tank aren't the best. But you do get 320 alpha damage with these shells, which is uh, very comparable to the Amex 5100. Accuracy of 0.38, which is pretty bad. And a very bad aim time of 3.2 seconds. Yeah, well, another tier 8 autoloader in the game. Do we need this tank in the game? And why uh, is it special in my eyes? I think that it's a very special tank. And it certainly fits into World of Tanks. Why do I think this? Uh, well, you actually get armor compared to the French autoloader tanks. As we can see, we actually get some armor. And you get amazing gun depression. Uh, which pretty much gives this autoloader a very different role on the battlefield. As the French autoloaders uh, were pretty much the assassins. And the support assassins. This thing is a rich line autoloader. This thing can just go hold down uh, on itself. Which will increase the angle of these uh, turret plates even more. And it will just enable you to use the gun depression to the max. And just unload into your enemy. So... That's what I think, uh, that's why I think that these tanks fit into the game. They get a very unique playstyle compared to the other autoloaders in this game. And that playstyle is the Ridgeline Warrior autoloaders. Which is something we have never seen in this game before. Guys, I am very, very stoked about these new tier 8, yeah, at least from the tier 8 up tanks in the Swedish tech tree. So let's quickly go up towards tier 9. Then as we can see we get the Emil 2. Which looks a lot like the MX50 100, uh, 120 as we can see. It is very comparable. It also has the spike nose. But is this spike nose any good? Does it have any uh, any armor whatsoever? Uh, it doesn't really have armor. It has 80mm of mows. As we can see it is very well angled indeed. But still 80mm in tier 9. Um, it's not really going to cut it for you is it? Also 60mm on the side and 30 on the rear. Nothing special there. But then we get on towards the turret. And luckily it does get good turret armor of 250mm. Which is angled as well. Uh, in multiple directions as we can see this. So that's just a very positive thing about this tank. The sides and rear armor is nothing special of course. So you're really going to have it from these uh, very well... Uh, yeah, this very good turret armor is what I meant to say. And still you maintain the 12 degrees of gun depression. Which is really good again. So this tank gets the same role in the battlefield. A rich line auto-loading tank. Which is amazing. The thing that's a, pret, uh, yeah, that's a big disadvantage about this tank. Is the gun elevation. As we can see it's only 8 degrees up. Which is very very bad. But as we can see. This star doesn't enable. The, yeah the gun to fully point itself up. Then we can uh, of course going to take a look. At the gun of this tank. We got a 120mm autoloader in this tank. Again with 4 shells in the magazine. Again with 3.5 seconds between uh, each shell in the autoloader. And this clip will load for 40 seconds. So only 3 seconds more than the previous tank. We got 252mm of penetration. Which is pretty competitive for a tier 9 tank. It's a very good penetration. And we get 400 alpha damage which is very good. Also the premium rounds as we can see 300 millimeters of penetration. Very good as well. 0.38 accuracy. Pretty mediocre. And a pretty bad aim time of 2.8 seconds. At least it's a lot better than the 3.2 on the Emil 1. But still this is a lot better than the previous tank. 
The mobility on the Emil 2 improves just a little bit as we can see for 50 up to 56 km power top speed limit forwards and 18 backwards which is also too better than the Emil 1. So as we can see we do get a significant mobility upgrade compared to the Emil 1. So everyone, then it is time to go up towards the top of the tree, the top of this branch of the new Swedish light, medium and heavy tank branch, the Kravan. So as we can see, let's take a look at this absolute new tier 10 beast of a tank. Again, as we can see, very comparable to the Amex 50B and um, 5120, at least, at least looks wise as we can see. But still, the whole armor is nothing special, really. It is a pike nose again, as we can see. But 90mm on the front. Yeah, at tier 10, it's not going to bounce anything. Even in this angle, I think it is not going to be enough to bounce any tanks. 70 on the sides, 37 on the rear of the hull. Nothing special there. Then again, a very good frontal turret armor of 225mm. Which is, again, very nice uh, on the ridge lines. If combined with the... 12 degrees of gun depression again. Same role for the Kranvan on the battlefield. Uh, we get very bad side and rear armor on the turret as we can see. But yeah, well, what do you expect? We do get this very, very nice frontal armor. Which is really, really nice. Okay then, the mobility of this new tier 10 beast. 60 km per hour top speed. 80 km per hour top speed backwards. Yeah, well, just amazing mobility for a heavy tank. Nothing really to say about that. Then we get up towards the gun of this beast. It is the same gun as the tier 9. But of course, as this tank uh, is tier 10 now, it gets a few improvements. Again, 4 shells in the magazine. That's th that stays unchanged. But as we can see, the time of loading between shells goes down to 3 seconds, which is nice. It's better than 3.5, of course. Also, the time of reload of one clip uh, to reload the clip is 33 seconds, which is pretty significant compared to the Emil 2. Very nice penetration of the. Uh, pen yeah, of the. Uh, what is it called? The, the normal rounds. And the premium round stays the same, alpha damage stays the same. The accuracy goes up to 0.36, which is very nice. If, yeah, it's, it's not very nice, it's mediocre, what am I saying? It's not the worst, it's not the best, it's pretty meh. That's what I meant to say. And the aim time goes down as well. It goes down to 2.5 seconds. It's, again, not the best and not the worst. But as we can see, this tier 10 tank shoots APCR as standard ammunition, which is really nice, and heat as premium ammunition. And I think I forgot to mention this. For the tier 9 Emil 2 as well. As we can see. It shoots APCR as standard. And heat shells as standard as well. That also goes for the Emil 1. As we can see we're quickly taking a look. APCR standard. And APCR as premium ammunition. So everyone. That's all the new Swedish light, medium and heavy tanks rundown. And also the second preview video concludes all the new Swedish tanks. That will be coming into the game in patch 9.17. I hope I made this preview video just as enjoyable or even more enjoyable than my last one. And I hope that you guys got a good indication of what the Swedish light, medium and heavy tanks will look like. Please leave a like as I did put a lot of time into making this video. And also I would really like if you considered subscribing if you haven't already. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.